Hello and welcome to the tutorial in programming Arduinos and ESPs in which we are going to be looking at programming our own little MP3 player which is great for having little add-ons for your robot projects or other electronic projects so let's take a closer look one of the reasons I do like these DF players is the fact they are so incredibly cheap. You can see this, a five pack for £9.50. So they do work out really cheap for putting into your projects. So the DF player has got quite a lot of inputs and outputs, but we only really need to use um, sort of six connections to make this work. So let's take a closer look at the actual wiring. We can see we've got voltage, receiver, transmitter, some other bits that I'm not going to be using, the speaker connections and the ground. I'm not going to use any of the things on this other side for today. Um, so we can see I'm hooking up my three volts to the VCC, my ground to ground, D6 to TX, um, D7 to RX and then the speed wise to the actual speed. So let's take a closer look if you want to see how I'm doing it. So again I can just uh, we're using high-tech software here so I'm going to hook up my three volts sort of into my into my volts just there I'm going to go from ground uh, to ground I'm going to put my D6 I'll just change the colour so it doesn't get too confusing my D6 to TX and then I'm going to put my D7 to my RX, that's going to allow us to send the data to sort of start and stop MP3s um, and then find the speakers themselves. So I've got a little speaker down here, it doesn't matter which way around you go at this point. So I'm just going to go speaker 1 is going to go to red and speaker 2 is going to go to the black and there we go. That's our circuit, so it's nice and simple. Bring on my little webcam, we can see I've got it all ready wired with some simple jumper wires on a breadboard. Before we get into the code, an important thing to also look at is the SD card. So I've got an SD card already plugged in, I've already copied some R2D2 sound effects to it, is when you're playing the tracks on this MP3 player, it will play them in the order of which you copied them to the SD card, not the file names. It doesn't care about the file names. Um, if you're curious about how we can fix that, I can go into that later on. Uh, but for now, I've just copied some tracks across just for testing purposes. Okay, so now we can definitely jump into the code. Okay, so I've opened up Arduino, um, and I'm, I am working with the ESP chip, but this exact same thing will work with a normal Arduino itself. So my first few lines of code is to install some libraries, or include some libraries. So I'm going to include something called the DF Robot DF Player Mini, which is the header files to actually make this little chip kind of work. And then I'm also going to do something called Software Serial. I'm sure you know, but USB is Ultra Serial Bus, or Universal Serial Bus, but Serial being the keyword. We want to create a software serial port so we can make our ESP talk to the AE MP3 player while still enabling us the ESP to talk through the USB port back to the PC. What you'll need to do is go onto your tools, go onto your Manage Libraries, and make sure that you've included the DF uh, player libraries itself. Okay, so now I can just type in DF player. It should come up with a few different options. Okay, so I've got a few there, but the one I'm using for this particular project is this DF robot DF player mini. All I've got to do is click on the install button and it'll put all the files that we need. Okay, so now our next bit, again just outside the setup function, I'm going to create a link to our software serial, uh, which I'm now linking to D6 and D7, as we sort of mentioned just here. You could choose any other pins, but this is what I'm using because of other projects where I'm using my other pins for other things within it. I'm now creating an object for our DF player itself. Um, number of tracks is zero. This is because later on the code, I like to know how many number of tracks I'm working with so I can choose one at random. And I'm setting the volume to 30. 30 is the maximum. Uh, what I'd like to in the future is hook this up to some switches so we could control it or even control the volume remotely. So right now, though, I'm putting it on maximum. Okay, inside my setup function, um, I'm just setting up the serial port. So this is the normal USB, so I can send data back to the PC so I can debug it and make sure everything's working as it should. Um, I'm also going to create two functions called setup MP3 and play sound. I've not made them yet, so if you tried to run this now, it would crash because these don't exist. So in my setup, I'm going to call up setup MP3. And setup MP3, it's a bit, a bit long. It doesn't need to be as long as this. We could refine it, but again, it's all about uh, making sure we can see what it's doing. So, I've got a function called setup mp3. It's got void because it won't return a value. Um, my software serial.begin. So, just like at the beginning of this, where we said setup serial begin, this is for the USB port, but this is now setting up the software serial to start talking to the mp3 player. 
I'm now just outputting some information back through the USB so we can see if it's actually working or not. And as it says there, this can take three to five seconds to work. This is not my code. This is just what came from the tutorials I looked at many years ago. Um, and yes, it doesn't always fire up straight away. So now if not, this is basically not, um, if this has not begun, then we're just going to say it's, it's not working yet. And while true, so basically this is going to loop until the MP3 player is actually working, which means really should put this in a timeout. So if it doesn't find the MP3 player straight, well, after a few seconds, it should sort of give up and let the rest of your code run. Right now, this means if your MP3 player doesn't find, it'll never run the rest of it. Um, I'm then saying serial print line, DF player now online. So we've got that feedback, we know it's working. I'm also going to say number of tracks. I've not found the number of tracks yet, that's what's in this line. So number of tracks is equal to the DF player, read file count in folder zero. Zero just means the root folder. So if you've got any subfolders, then they'll be, they'll be numbered. Um, and I'm just going to print output the number of tracks. So if I was now to run this bit of code, so I've already set this up for the ESP, this on a previous video if you need to go through them settings, but I'm making sure I've got my board, my ESP, and I'm on my D1 R2 Mini. Uh, if you've not got that, please check my last video. So I'm just going to comment out this line play sound and we're going to copy it across to the ESP chip and let's see if it works. I'm going to open the serial monitor so I can see what data is coming back in and out of it. Okay, there we go. We can see it's trying to connect to the MP3. It's not managed it, it's rebooting. Now it has managed it and it's found we've got five tracks on the SD card. Okay, let's make it actually play a sound. Coming below the actual setup MP3, I've got the play sound function now. Um, I'm setting the volume to 30. This volume is set by the variable that we created up here. Um, I'm creating a random track selector. So basically, rand track equals random, one to number of tracks. So I'm using uh, the variable that we found up here. So it's going to go from one to five, hopefully, and then it's going to play that track one to five. It's going to display on screen so we can see which track it's playing and then it's going to delay for three seconds and then it's going to come back to whichever function called it. So if I come back up into my loop, into my, sorry, into my setup and say play sound, so it's going to set up the MP3, play one sound, then inside loop I'm going to do this again. So every three seconds it will play a track. So let's make sure that's working, I'm just going to pop up the serial monitor so we can see what's happening, press upload and we'll wait for it to get there. It takes a few seconds. Okay, so we can see it's struggling to connect to it because it was too fast, but now it's found it. Number of tracks, and there we go. There we go, so it's played tracks one, two, three, back to one, back to two. Not very random at this point, it feels like a screen in sequence, um, but it is playing them randomly, it's just randomly choosing the, oh, there we go, track twice, track three twice. So that's how we can play sounds using a DF player, using an Arduino. Um, the next step would be to maybe hook it up to some sensor or some switch or some code or a remote. Um, I'll show you in the next lesson how we can hook it up to ultrasonics. So I'll be combining those, those features. Um, if you found this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe, positive comment below. Please feel free to give any suggestions for future content and I will see you in the next video.